Hi, I'm Dana, and we're at the Barnes & Noble bookstore, and we're at the Maker Fair event, and I'm with Peter Ambush from the Ducre School of Art. Peter, I see you have this beautiful artwork behind you that you've done. Can you tell me a little bit about the piece that you brought here tonight? Well, basically, it's a uh, rendition of an idea that I had or a concept that I came, uh, not necessarily came up with, but I based it on a, a biblical scripture, or um, uh, it's a Basically, it's the uh, creation, you know, it's the first day or first night and day of creation. So these angels, uh, I have these uh, two women who are representative of angels who are representative of night and day. Um, They're absolutely beautiful. And can you tell me a little bit of how you created this? Well, basically, it's a, it's a multimedia kind of uh, multimedia process. Um, the board is prepped with a, a layer of gesso, which is just a, a primer uh, covering to protect it against uh, the paint that I'm going to be using on top. Um, basically, there's a sketch. Uh, I sketch out the, uh, the uh, figures and everything that's going to go on there. And then over top of that is going to be, uh, I paint a gouache layer uh, of going from the, uh, from the one color to another color, you know, so kind of like a rainbow. But with this one, it kind of has more of a rainbow effect. Um, but gouache meaning it's, a, it's an opaque watercolor. Once that's on, I take a damp brush and I know, uh, the gouache is water soluble. So uh, once I have that on there, I go on, I take a damp brush and I start pulling out the highlights. So a lot of these, you know, uh, values, these lighter values are pulled out so that the white of the gesso that's underneath of it kind of shine through. And you're working off the actual underneath sketch that comes through the gouache then? Right, yeah, the sketch is kind of, you know, I mean, it's not much of it. It's not like a uh, fully rendered pencil sketch. It's just, a, you know, an outline. Mm -hmm. And then, but once that's on there, then I go over top of that with oil paint. You know, so oil paint, probably kind of using like the same colors, but maybe a little bit more intense. Mm -hmm. I go over top of that with oil paint, and then I start to pull out from that. And when, you, when you're saying you, you, you actually pull the color out, how do you actually do that? Well, with the, with the, in the gouache stage, it's just with water, you know, water and a paintbrush and a paper towel. You know, so I damp the brush, and I go in there, and I start kind of pulling out. So I'm working negatively rather than working positively by putting in from, like, the dark. I'm Which is actually the opposite of way a lot of artists work. Right. You're doing it in the reverse. Right. Hey, and it gives you a, a, a different look to it. You know I mean? It's a different process, a different look. I mean, there's several artists, artists that have done it in the past, you know, during the 70s, you know, maybe about five or six different artists that do it, um, that have done it. And, and it's a totally different look for each one. You know, I mean, you kind of say it's the same process, so you should be able to get the same look. But each one is totally different, you know, just because of, you know, maybe they might, they might not do the oil part. You know, maybe they do it in acrylic, or maybe they, you know, uh, add other elements to it. So with this one, it has, it has the, uh, the gouache and then the oil, and then there's some spattering. You know, I take a toothbrush and, and spatter white paint on here to make the star effect, and then some of it is... Um, Airbrush, you know, I have some airbrush areas here and here. So you're really using a lot of different mediums to actually create this whole piece. Right, yeah. And it came from, a lot of it comes from, I mean, a lot of the different mediums that I've used and everything, it came from when I used to work at the Star Ledger. And I used to do the TV Guide covers each week. And they wanted to have a more consistent kind of look. They wanted to kind of go, at first, you know, they were using a lot of different freelancers. And each freelancer and each artist had a different look. But then they want to kind of have somebody that can kind of do, this, do the covers each week and be more consistent. But I got bored with that. So, so each week I would kind of say, okay, well, I want to do it this way. I want to do it that way. And sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. And a lot of it was like trial and error of what I wanted to do. And, um, now, you've done a, a remarkable amount of covers for the Star Ledger. Just how many did you do? Uh, over 400, you know, by the time I left. You know, In the span of how many years? Uh, about 10. About 10 years, yeah. That's phenomenal. Do you have a collection of, of all the pieces that you did? I have all my original paintings, you know, pretty much. You know, I've given some away, um, but, um, you know, most of them I have. And then uh, I've had people collect the covers themselves, you know, and put them in a binder. And I have a couple of, you know, like two or three binders of, of the covers in, uh, that, they, that was sent to me. Do you have your own collection of your binders? No, I, you know, I never really collected them all. In See, that's what happens. Yeah. Most artists right. don't do that. They don't collect what they're, right. where right. their stuff got printed. Right, yeah. I, I mean, I have a copy of them, but they're not in a binder. And I don't have everything. I probably only 
definitely maybe have half of the of the covers, you know. Of the, yeah, so. But I got I have the original. But you have the original <laughs> pieces, so. Right, right. <laughs> Very great. So tell me a little bit about this because I know this is to be a billboard. Tell me about how this came about and where it's going to be. This was a competition that came out about uh, a couple of months ago by Art Pop, and uh, what they did was. Where they, are they located? They're all over the place. Uh, um, the main, well, this one's for Poconos, you know, for the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Uh, they have an art pop for uh, Lehigh Valley. It's one, it's one company, but then they have different uh, markets, you know. So this is going in the Pocono uh, market, and then they have the Lehigh Valley. I think they have a North Carolina, and there's uh, two or three other ones. But basically, they were soliciting for artists, you know, to enter in uh, artwork to put on billboards, you know, to kind of. Uh, kind of spice up, you know, people's, you know, drives, you know, from work or from, you know, to home on the highway. That would spice me up on the highway. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. beautiful. So I entered in, I was, I was uh, among uh, about 90 other uh, entries, you know, people that entered, and uh, I was one of the five who won uh, a billboard. So this will go up uh, within the next couple of weeks, and then it will be up for a year. And then with the with the uh, with the possibility of moving, you know, sometimes they might relocate, you know, to another place. But uh, but it'll be up for a year. Oh, that's fantastic! Well, I want to thank you very much for um, allowing me to interview you. Your work is fantastic. I, looking at all these pieces around us, it's. I know that you have collection after collection. You have at least ten different collections yes. of, of artwork. Can you tell me? Can you just rattle off how many collections you actually have? Well, I have a, a black and white series that's all uh, homeless uh, people. Um, I have, uh, and then I just have black and whites, you know, like a spiritual line. What, what um, got you started on the homeless people? Because I've seen a couple of your homeless. They are stunning, thank you, thank stunning, and, and they're so mesmerizing. You look at, you just want to look at them. Yeah, well, when I used to work in Newark, I mean, I used to have to drive, I mean, I drove down uh, Broad Street, which is one of the main streets in Newark, you know, to get home. And on the one street, uh, there was a homeless man, and he used to come to your window and, and just have, a, you know, hold up a cup and then ask for a change, you know, any change you have. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of people just wave him off, and then he just shrug his shoulders and go to the next car, you know. And so one time, you know, I got stuck at the light, you know, and you kind of, a lot of times you just want to go like this, you know. But I said, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him some money. I got some change, you know. And so I, I rode down the window. I gave him some change, and I actually found out who he was and what his name was and everything. His name was Kevin. And uh, later on, by seeing him uh, quite often, I uh, found out more about him. He used to be a, a, a saxophone jazz player, um, and he had family in Newark, but he decided that he would live on the street. And uh, one day I was coming from Decray. Actually, I was uh, taking a class at Decray School of Art, and on my way to work, uh, I saw him on the street. And... Um, I, you know, an idea came to mind, you know, because like I said, I was working on a spiritual, uh, I have some spiritual works, and uh, I thought of a scripture, um, Matthew 25, 40, which is uh, when Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, Verily I say unto these, you, the least of these you do, the, the things you do for the least of these, my brethren, you've done unto me. And I thought, I said, I came up with the idea, I said, well, you know, why don't I just have him like holding a cup and having his hand held out? And, and it was during the winter time, so he's wearing a winter coat. He's got his hoodie up and everything. I gave him my glove, glove. I gave him to use, and I took a couple of shots of him in different positions. And it actually, you know, the painting is done in black and white, but behind his head is a gold halo. And so, um, and then I named it uh, Matthew 2540. And uh, you know, basically, it's just trying to say, okay, well, you know, when you help these people, you know, they're they're not they're not someone to kind of brush off or not to see and everything because they, they a lot of them go unseen and and uh, a lot of people don't want to deal with them and everything like that but a lot of them you know you just don't know their backstory you don't know how they got there I mean it could be you you, you know? know when I worked in Manhattan I came across uh, a lot of them especially when you went down into the subway lavatories mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <right. Yeah>, yeah. <laughs> you know and I got to talking to some of them mm -hmm. and some of them um, gave me some of the most magical stories of their right. lives right. They had they had really lived normal lives right. until something came crashing down, and right. it was amazing what will will take a soul down, who otherwise you just pass on the street with thousands of others right. out there as right. well, and it just it just tears at your heart. Yeah, yeah. Because they're beautiful souls, and they were living normal lives at one point. Right, right. Yeah. And, and I wanted to convey that with my my painting. I mean, sometimes you know, like you know, with with 
a person on the street, you know, you might pass them by because you don't want to look at them, but I'm forcing you to look at them, you know, when I do a picture or portrait of them because, and, and a lot of, you know, some of these other paintings, you know, are not as photorealistic as the ones that I do. I mean, they almost look like, you know, people said they almost look like photographs, you know, so people, ha and they're so detailed, you know, people are studying them and everything like that. And Well, actually, you have them on your website, so we can go to Peter Ambush Art. Art. Dot com. Yeah. Yes. Because um, I really think you should go out and, and see them. They're stunning renditions um, in both charcoal and... and um, charcoal and airbrush. I uh, have some that are acrylic uh, painted uh, in color. Uh, so it's a, it's a completely different line than, than what he's got here. Yes. Um, and each, each line that he has is, is stunning to look at. Peter, I want to thank you so very much for coming out to this event, supporting DeCray School of Art. This is Dana with Peter Ambush, um, and we're at the Barnes & Noble in Somerville, and this is for Nonprofit TV.